Hello, everybody. This is Mike Fauche. One of the key elements of the QNAP security software suite is the security counselor. Today's video, we're going to walk through its features to see if it can help us protect our data and keep it safe. If you want to learn more about this application, then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe and click the notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. So today I want to go over the Security Counselor app and walk through some of the features as well as some of the issues that I experienced. Most notably the Q Firewall app, which is truly a work in process, as well as a couple of solution links that didn't work quite work correctly. Though the Q Firewall app is currently a bit of an embarrassment, it does have the potential to be a key part of the security in the future. I plan on making a separate video on Q Firewall once I better understand it once there's a few more features. So stay tuned for a different video on this. So with that said, let's get started with going through the application and to see how it works. So let's go through a quick overview of the Security Counselor because overall it's a pretty useful tool. It does have a couple of issues, but we'll discuss that as we go along. So if you haven't installed the application, go ahead and do that from the App Center. You can install it from there. Once you have it installed when you run it, your screen may look a little different because this one's been run a couple times. So it may ask you for some basic default questions. Once you run it from that point forward, it should look pretty much like my screen. The only uh, exception will be you may have the Q firewall. It may say install that it may not already be installed in your system. At this point, I would also suggest not installing it until a few things get worked out. I'm actually working with them currently to take care of these false positives. If you look here, under the notifications, um, it flags a timeout or a threshold reached of 30 accesses to the device if you only run it for a couple of minutes. So it's picking up something internally that it's not really clear on what that is. So I'm working with them to try to better understand this. And when I do, I'll put a separate video out for the Q firewall. In the, in the meantime, some of the other tools in here are very useful that you can benefit from. So the first thing is that we want to do is change the security policy. Now, by default, this comes up as a basic security policy. And I mean, that's fine. You can leave it that way, but I'm going to suggest you switch it to advanced. For the most part, the advanced does a, a more complete scan. So it will find a few more things, maybe things that are more on the edge. But I believe it's worthwhile to know so you can you know, optimize your security. If you run the basic, you probably will pass, at least unless if you've done the basic practices and I've done a separate video on locking down your um, QNAP NAS, which I'll post a link to. But for the most part, running it at, ma at advanced gives you the best view of what's going on. So it, once you get that in set to advanced, it's pretty straightforward to actually run it. You're just going to hit scan. But before we do that, I wanted to also mention the antivirus you know, um, it will tell you, assuming it's installed and enabled, and your malware remover should also be installed and enabled. If it's not, it will be grayed out, and I would suggest you do that before doing a whole lot more. So let's go ahead and hit the scan results and talk about what it tells us and kind of walk through some of the options. Now, the first time you run this, or probably every time you run it, it's going to take a couple of minutes to run, depending on you know, how fast your system is, how much stuff is is configured, and so on. But it's it's pretty quick overall. Okay, so it's finished, and it says it's found four medium risk items. So let's talk about these items and also talk about what else it's going to tell us. So if we click on View Reports, it gives us a complete list of what it's found. Now, there's a couple things you need to know about this screen. First of all, we need to fix the issues that it's found. So if we look at these, some of these are really basic, like this app needs to be updated. But things like uh, administrator account needs to have two-step verification. I I'm guessing that most people will get this flag. So obviously clicking on this link will take you to that particular setting and allow you to fix it. There's also, if you click on suggested settings assistant, it will also give you the list of things that needs to be fixed and allow you to fix it from here as well, just by clicking on the link. 
So I'm not going to go through how to enable two-step verification. It's pretty straightforward, and I would recommend you do that. Now, the one thing I did find is I did find a couple of bugs with this particular uh, flag, uh, telling me the email notifications and my push notifications uh, for the latest firmware is disabled. However, if you click on this link and you go to global settings, you'll find that actually it is enabled. So if I go to firmware, which is right here, it's enabled across the board. So it's not clear why it's flagging that. Um, it's a little bit quirky there. But nevertheless, as long as you know what it is, you're in good shape as long as you have it enabled. And it's not a critical item. It's just a, it's definitely a convenience feature to be notified when the newest firmware comes out. Some people do have a policy of never updating right away. I actually don't have that policy. As soon as an update's available, I really want to put it in just to stay current with security fixes. But equally important is that you look at the items that it didn't flag. Because there's a lot of stuff to be learned from there as well. The, you may or may not know that you've set some of this stuff. Taking a look at all the things that are actually found to be good is also useful and good information to have. And if you've followed some of my, my last security video, a lot of these have already been taken care of. With the exception of things like the two-step verification and things. Most of these other uh, services and stuff that it typically flags... Um, have already been addressed. So your results may vary. You may, you know, 25 things you need to fix instead of four, but that's good. I mean, knowing what you need to enable or disable is helpful. And this is really a quick way to do that. So that's pretty much it for the general over overview of the program. A couple things I want to mention. If you go to the last tab here, Security Advisory, you can subscribe to uh, Security Advisory notifications. And it does uh, also give you the option to report any vulnerabilities, which is a little tougher to do if you're not a coder and into looking at this kind of stuff. But overall, it's pretty straightforward to, to run. Again, the, you're starting from the beginning, you, stood, you just want to make sure all this stuff is enabled with the exception of Q Firewall for now. Um, keep an eye open for a soon-to-come video that's dedicated to Q Firewall that gets into more of the configurations and... Um, hopefully be able to report more on this false positive because it's been making me crazy for the last few days where I've been trying to understand how this works and be able to explain how to make custom configurations. So overall, I think that's it for this video. It's just a quick overview of the security counselor. Again, if you don't have it installed, I highly recommend you do so. I hope you found this video useful. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and click that notifications icon so you'll be notified of any new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.